What's up guys? It has been a long time since I decided to record a video. And uh, yeah, I just decided, you know, right now is the time to pick up the camera and talk to you guys for the first time in two months. So I'm gonna catch you up with basically everything that has happened in the last two months, why I didn't record, what has happened post-show, did I go through depression, a new phase, you know, what's going on? So to start off, right, why haven't I recorded for the last, well, two months? To start off, well, I was recording post-show, right? So I did like a whole, my last video I had was the um, unfortunate incident where Kyle ruptured his quad. Um, that didn't really have to do anything with me not recording, but I did have a nice flow of video ideas I wanted to do, a whole series, and then Kyle, you know, couldn't really participate in them. But I was still recording, right? I had a video I was going to post. It was basically showcasing everything I was doing in my life. It was a day in the life from like afar. I wasn't vlogging it, I had someone else recording it, and it was like a third person day in the life. So you're all, you're watching me wake up, go about my routine post-show, and um, the video was a good idea I had, but it just didn't have my final grade A production, you know, checklist, go post, upload on YouTube. Um, that video was really cool because if you guys follow me on Instagram or seen my caption here and there, I mentioned that third place was like, the best thing that has happened to me in bodybuilding, right? I truly do think in bodybuilding, it was in life. I mean, no, but bodybuilding, yes. If I got second place, got my pro card, second place pro card, I would have been like motivated in a way like, yeah, I'm a pro, right? Fuck yeah. Train a little bit hard, but I would have been like chilled out. Third place, dude, that shit stung. I wish I recorded it. That show day, when I got third place, it wasn't recorded. I sat backstage for like, 10 minutes by myself, I didn't think about my, oh, that sounds awful. I didn't think about, you know, friends or family that came to me. I was just devastated because I thought about all the work I put in all this. Everyone thinks about that, right? But I just took a moment, sat there, assessed what I could do. And from that moment, I knew what to do post-show. But yeah, I had all these emotions, tears coming down my eyes. And then um, just really took some time to myself that night and I was motivated. So... Yeah, I decided to record a video called like a day in the life from afar and it was pretty cool because it showed me, you know, going by my routine because I was I was on routine post show. I grew a shit ton. I went from 188 stage weight to 217 in like eight weeks, seven weeks and uh, I was lean. Still had like feathering, still had abs in my front. It was crazy. So reverse went well, you could say my strength shot up. Shit was going fucking good and it still is. Still is going great. It's like three months post show now but yeah so that video was literally just me eating my meals all this type of stuff just like a, a boring bodybuilder life but to me it spoke to me enough but the production quality and anything was just not video youtube quality for me so I, I decided not to post that right then i wanted to take a little little break i wanted to live in the moment and uh youtube fuck <sighs> all right i don't mean youtube I wanted to live life in the moment for the rest of summer because, well, being 20 years old, I've done like, I don't know, five shows. I think I've done a good amount of shows and every single year I've decided to prep. So after that last video where I didn't want to post it, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to enjoy summer, be a 20 year old, not party. I didn't do that shit. I was still sticking to my regiment, still dieting or not dieting. Well, following a diet plan, but growing, you know? Um training really hard but I was going to the beach I went to concerts I went fishing just shit I couldn't do in prep and uh yeah I could have picked up this camera recorded been like showing it making videos out of it but to me that takes away living in the moment and I truly do enjoy living in the moment for my life it's funny that I'm in social media too because like I don't want to document a story for Instagram or post everything I'd rather just like for instance, I went fishing, I caught a damn shark. That shit was sick. And like, it would've been cool for a video, sure, but like just living in that moment, just focus on the shark and not like, yo, fucking get the shot, make sure you get the right angle. Like, it's a relief. I'm just kind of like enjoying it. So yeah, that basically was that, right? I was living in the moment and then I was ready to pick up a camera. It was hard because I you, you do something for so long and you're consistent with it, it's easy to continuously talk to it. And then when I haven't done it for like, it was maybe three weeks at this time, it was hard to pick up the camera and be like, hey, what's up guys? It was a little bit hard to do. Yeah, then I had like a Houston trip coming up, right? It was in like five days from this moment. 
I had a videographer coming. I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to get content out there. It should be good. So I bought a new mic for it because unfortunately the mic that had a bunch of audio issues from my last couple YouTube videos, I broke it. I didn't choose to break it. I dropped my camera and uh, it shattered the mic. That mic was like a Sony EC1M. Dave recommended it to me. It's pretty cool because it would attach on top of the camera where the external mic goes in. And there's a magnetic strip that just automatically, I mean, it just attached to the camera and it works. You don't need to plug it into a 3.5 millimeter jack. So I got a new camera or a new microphone, which has to be plugged into that 3.5 millimeter jack. And it wasn't working. I was like, how could this be? Maybe I have like a faulty wire. Maybe the wire's broken. Go into Best Buy, get a new wire. Not the case. Turns out it's the actual hole, the vagina in my microphone camera. Jesus, I'm dyslexic. It was the vagina in my camera that was broken. So called up some camera shops. How long would this take? They said four to six weeks. I was like, oh my God. I am in Houston without a microphone and all of the content I recorded that I knew I was gonna get was shit. The audio was awful. Literally, if you guys watch the videos, and if I were decided to post it, right, because content's content, right, just get something out there. Your ears would have bled and you would have just wanted to click off the video. And for the last couple of videos, I had audio issues. You would have said the same thing and I wasn't going to post it. So I do still have those clips. I could make like a recap of the last two months that I have like here and there scattered footage, which I probably will do. But I just didn't want to post those videos because... I like to show and talk my personality out there and they would have just literally been music and workouts and BS like uh, B-roll and would have been boring. So yeah, those videos also just didn't work. So then come back from, it's raining by the way, um, yeah. So I come back from Houston, I'm like all right, <laughs> I need a mic. So I get that old mic, the Sony EC1, I might get a new one, so I have like three good mics right now only one works for my camera the Sony EC1M that a magnetic strip that attaches right so I get that it's not my favorite microphone it supposedly is a great mic but I had that mic for the last couple months and you guys kept telling me there's audio issues and I was aware of it I don't know why so I have that mic again and I also decided to get a new camera I'm shooting on a Sony ZV-1 which is like a little point-and-shoot vlog camera and yeah so it should definitely help me record some more videos but yeah, that basically sums up why I didn't record what happened. Nothing really bad happened at all. I just, my priorities were not on content. It was on bodybuilding. I really wanted to focus on that because I've never done a proper reverse, which I'll talk when I go inside because of the rain. Um, my reverse this year was, I'm really proud of it. It was really proud and bodybuilding is my main passion. It's not content creation. I do enjoy recording content, but I love the art of bodybuilding. So I wanted to put all of my effort into that while also enjoying life. So yeah, that sums up why I've been MIA. I'm back, I'm healthy, I'm not depressed at all. I actually was really relieving. There's always in the back of my head like, record, 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 what's going on? You know, people wanna know. And I'm like, fuck. So that was like the only minor thing, but I was doing really well, really happy with life. So I am excited to record some more videos again and uh, I'm gonna go inside now. Allie, look, I'm vlogging. Do you want to tell them how long it took to pick up the camera and talk? Way too long! Do they hate me? I hope not! Do I hate them? No! Run, boy, run! <laughs> Ali told me it's important to record a lot of things because I haven't recorded in a long time. So, we're making sure we get everything. Even that. You didn't capture the Siri? No, I wish, Fuck. bro. So after the butt sweat, I said, really, Allie? And then Siri goes, that's not nice. Because I guess Siri activated. But, oh. Where did he eat my hair? Shut up, Clark. Hold on, I gotta wait for this thing to shut up. I can't see a thing. And you look like a ring ding. Ah! <laughs> so why don't you update them on your diet? Oh, you can't, because that's too loud? Yeah. As I mentioned, <laughs> fucking Christ. 
why don't you just be yourself instead of trying to be this character that they expect you to be because you were in previous videos. I don't know, maybe your voice changed. Maybe you went through another round of puberty, huh? Oh my God. You're turning into me, Allie. That's shit I say. So act yourself, number one. I'll act myself, number two. No, you know what? My third eye has been so open lately. Yeah, less actually, canola oil. Post-show, I was extremely motivated, as I said. And what happened exactly post-show was I followed my reverse plan, which I didn't actually receive from Kyle. I followed my two week out plan. So two weeks out from my first show, which had like not my lowest amount of food and the second lowest amount of food, I followed that post show. And staying shredded, staying good looking, it was great. One night, you remember this night, I stumbled across a Seth Ferrosi video. Check it out, it's called, You Are What You Eat, Get Chubby To Get Big. And as I watched this video, my motivation fucking skyrocketed. If you guys watch this right now, you will literally write a message to Seth Ferrosi thanking him for this great motivation. And basically, it was just saying, like, you are what you eat, food is fuel, you fuel yourself for your next workout, shit like that. I was like, dude, it just speaks to me right now. I've been so deprived of food. So I decided to, hey, you stay there. So that night, I, I had a binge aid a little bit with motivation, of course. And I decided to eat, well, maybe three almond butter and almond butter and banana sandwiches. So it's like a open face sandwich, maybe like a total of like 80 grams of almond butter amongst the three sandwiches. And then chopped a banana and drizzled some honey. I ate that, was that probably all I ate that night? I think. Didn't you eat some yogurt? Didn't you get yogurt too? No, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't start the raw, raw diet yet. No, you had the light and fit yogurts. Maybe, I don't know, but I, I was eating whole foods, right? So now that video spoke to me, I was like, you know what? Let me try this post show. Let me have an abundance of high quality whole foods, very minimal ingredients, and follow a plan of that. So I made my own plan, right? Kyle didn't send me reverse. So I was like, you know what? I wanna grow right now. So I decided I was eating seven meals a day, which I did. Six meals were whole meals, and the seventh meal was right before bed. It was like my snack meal, which were the almond butter and banana sandwiches. So I was eating a shit ton. I also incorporated raw dairy in this diet and basically the cleanest sources of foods you possibly could. I called up some friends that were really into like the whole nutrients, raw dairy, which is illegal because you can't have pat you. They do not want you to have unpasteurized milk because there can be bacteria, but pasteurization also kills, yes, bacteria, but some of the nutrients that you want. So I found a source, I pick it up here and there from some nice Amish folks every Wednesday. And yeah, I drink raw dairy and raw yogurt I consume. And I also get some corn soy free pasture raised eggs. So I was eating basically the highest quality of food I possibly could. I was eating a pound of red meat a day from a great company called Force of Nature. They have beef and bison, ancestral it's called, which is basically they have a mixture of beef liver and beef heart, 7% liver, 3% uh, heart. So 10% of that meat is organ. So I was a little liver king for a little bit and I noticed, you know, a lot of good strength, fucking everything was going crazy. And having that diet, I was like, I felt like being completely honest, my face would feel so full and I'd feel like I'd, I'd be go to, going to tie down my shoe, tie my shoes and babe, I'd be like, <sighs> just mm -hmm. like huffing and puffing. And, but you know, for bodily purposes, it looked great. I looked great. You still looked lean. Yeah, I looked lean. I, I threw up the check-in before, like that check-in where I was 217 in the red tight underwear that I showed a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. It was absurd. That was your heaviest weight. That was, well, my heaviest and best package. Okay. Because then we took, Ali and I, both of our bodies were shot, right? I was training so hard. Me and my own plan, I, oh my God, I mentioned that. So I made a plan post-show, right? I've been doing hypertrophy, bodybuilding style, volume contractions for like two years. If you go down my YouTube page, when I started working out with Kyle, ever since then has been mainly bodybuilding hypertrophy. And it'd be like a top set, sure, and then back off sets. 
but I wanted to go back to when I was 16 and when I was doing power building where I had corporate compound lifts. So I said, you know what? This large abundance of food, which was like six to 7,000 calories, the now good sleep I'm getting and a new stimulus of training should make me grow like crazy. And it did, it really fucking did. I was basically doing a push-pull leg split. It was, what was it? Push-pull legs, rest, I don't even know. But basically one of the days, which was Saturday, I would do like an SBD day. So I do all my main compounds and I would do, I would squat, I would incline bench, and I would do rack pulls. And all those main lifts, right, post show, which obviously I'm gonna be so weak, 5% body fat, joints are dry, energy's low. I did my first SBD day and I did like a 225 incline bench for like a five by five. I did, this was, 315 rack pull for five reps and that was it. And I squatted 315 for six and that was it. Am I overall stronger than that? Yes, but I knew at that point I was like my lowest. So seven weeks later, my maxes out were a 585 rack pull for four? Yeah, four. I did 295 bench for a three by four. Unfortunately, my or four by four, but my last set, I dropped it on my chest. You could have saw that on my Instagram. And then I squat. Well, my knee kind of had an injury three weeks into the program. I went from 315 to 405 in three weeks for four reps. So that was really cool. Strength was going crazy. My physique was filling out. It was going good. But then seven weeks in, my body was taxed. So Alan and I both decided. She took a week off. I took four days off. And I followed my rest day plan, which is obviously less food than a training day and my physique just like what's really for it just got glycogen depleted got a little yeah, flatter depleted. and i wasn't doing cardio disease i was literally giving my body rest and it did make my body feel so much better but my body uh what's the word i'm looking for to hear my overall your physique not physique body composition change i couldn't i couldn't go back to eating all that food the seven meals because I took my foot off the gas because I had to give my body a rest. And it was, I was very hard to eat those seven meals again. So I wasn't eating as much food. Um, and it was just basically like a break and then my body couldn't get back to where it was. So from there, I sort of just went down to six meals, trained, kept doing my thing. And yeah, that was definitely the most fun of a reverse I've ever done and the most successful. It was really good to do. I'm still on top of the raw dairy, ancestral meat. I'm not eating a pound of red meat a day. I'm actually following a plan now that Kyle gave me that I'm using for this off season. So that's good, but yeah. Overall, I would say diet. I've realized that if you watch that fucking Seth Rose video, like I'm telling you to, diet matters so much. I would even watch Jay Cutler fucking motivation videos saying you need to eat more, you need to eat more, you need to eat more. I'd be doing this when I would go to sleep and I would just be like, I gotta stay up and watch these videos, Ali. And I would, and I'd eat. And yeah, kinda grew the most I ever have in my life. And it was a fun experience overall. However, you're missing one part. What? Orange juice. Oh, holy shit. So, that was a good point. I posted a full day being on my Instagram. We only showed six of the meals, I lied there, I'm sorry. I didn't show my seventh meal, which was the snack. Um, I incorporated orange juice into my diet. When I went down to Miami for a raw nutrition pop-up event, I spoke to Matt Jansen, who is a professional coach, great coach. I told him about my you know, motivation, seriousness to really grow and build up my physique. And I noticed Brett Wilkin, who if you guys don't know is a professional bodybuilder, he has grown immensely over the last couple of years. I noticed when he was eating, he was drinking orange juice with every meal. And I asked Matt, I was like, Matt, why is he drinking orange juice with every meal? Isn't that just sugar, basically? I get it, it's orange juice, but what's your science behind this? And basically, so when he gets over 100 grams of carbs a meal, he's gonna throw orange juice in there to make it a little bit easier to get some carbs down, which I was eating 100 grams of carbs a meal. So I was like, I'm doing it. <laughs> so I basically just strictly added orange juice to every single meal besides my pre-meal. I was drinking over a half a gallon of orange juice a day. I was drinking 24 ounces of raw milk a day. 
and yeah, oh my god, the story of my first raw milk experience. Yeah, so, that was rough. So I first consumed raw milk, right? Story time. Here we go. Buckle in for your uh, your invent adventure of story. So basically, I got this raw milk, right? I got it on a Wednesday, and I had a flight to Miami, which I just mentioned, right? That same Wednesday. And I really wanted to try it, I've been looking forward to it, and I decided to have two glasses of raw milk. Holy shit, I can't see a damn thing. So, I get my package from the Amish people, right? They hand it off to me, I go back home, I have a flight in two hours. So I decided, oh, I'm gonna try it. I had a glass, 12 ounces, and I was like, wow, pretty good. I was like, you know, I want one more, one more glass before the flight. So I totaled like 24 ounces of raw milk, which I've been told to ease into because your body could obviously reject it. And number one, I haven't had dairy so much because of prep. And well, let's just say I ate some big meals. I had like a thousand grams of potato before my flight, carving up for that. And I was in the airport and I couldn't stop farting. I would fart every three minutes. We were on the flight and I'm in the aisle seat on the right side of the plane. The dude to my left, the guy in the middle on the left, right of the plane, was like this, just covering his nose, shaking his head. He's rocking back and forth. I noticed it. Having, I told you not to even look over at him for a hot second because he was freaking out. Having a complete manic episode and my seats, it was engraved in there. It was so bad. Um, but yeah, raw milk now agrees with me as I made my body adapt to it. And yeah, that's basically what happened post-show. Good training, living in the moment, raw milk, farts, orange juice, lots of food, strength, dropping 300 pounds on my chest, and uh, yeah, that basically sums it up all up. And that's where you've been the last two months. Two months.